Hello viewers and welcome to yet another episode of Conversations with Yobosa. I remain your host, Yobosa. Alright, so on today's show, we're going to be talking about communication. I know some of you are like, ah, what is it about communications? We know what it is now. You, you, you think you know, or maybe you know, but guess what? We're going to bring another dimension to it, or another perspective. Okay, just hang on, hang on with me. Let, me. let me do my intro, okay? So the power of PR and strategic communications has never been more important than it is today, and everyone can attest to that. They are key, formidable tools used in helping shape a narrative, steer discussions to positive outcomes, and sometimes even give rise to a whole movement. Today's guest is a 20-year communications veteran, skilled in messaging strategy, PR, and helping public and private sector organizations achieve their communications objectives. You'll get to know her intimately. She runs Credo Advisory, it's an Abuja-based consultancy firm that specializes in designing and implementing tactical communications initiatives. And Credo Advisory has served several national and international organizations, including the Nigerian government, the World Bank, USAID, and the Gates Foundation. Join me on this conversation to get to know Ms. Awele Okigo as we discuss her passion for communications and how to use this tool effectively in helping shape the African narrative on a global stage. We are here for this one. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Ms. Okibo. We're really glad to have you here. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks for having oh, me. You're looking fantastic, right? I love the hair. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so I understand um, Guys, there's some tension in that she has brought to the show. Let me let me let me show you. Mr. Okubo, I understand you're an avid cyclist, you're a culinary enthusiast, you schooled in the US and in Switzerland, and you are fluent in French. Only you. There's many, many, many things. Wow. Serious tension. Serious tension. I mean the pressure is on. Where did you pick up the French language? Uh well, my father was also um uh, he loved languages, he spoke several languages, and he wanted the same for his children. So we, we took French from very, uh, very early on. And okay. then uh, I took it as I majored in it in college. But I also lived in France. I went to school um, in France for uh, for a bit and was able okay. to work there. So that's really my stint in France was probably where I fully solidified my my French language. Okay. Okay. So just like you, we studied French. Uh, if you studied in Nigeria, I studied in Nigeria as well, primary school and all that. So we did French, but I think my French is a little rusty, but I'm going to try. Viewers, I'm going to try just to make sure that to tell you that I paid attention in school. Madame Okibo, bonjour, ça va? <laughs> bonjour. Bonjour. C'est un grand plaisir d'être ici. Oh my goodness. Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> well, good, hello, good morning. It's a it's a pleasure to be here. Wow. The French language just sounds so suave, so smooth. I love it any day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Okay. <laughs> I once got on a show and I asked a guy, because some guy said, oh, he was a culinary enthusiast. And when I probed, oh, okay, so what dishes do you prepare this and all that? He was like, no, 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 no. I don't prepare any dishes. I just enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what does that mean in your context? <laughs> so I eat, live, breathe food and um, from time. I've, and I think also we're a family of food and we talk about food. We love trying new recipes. Uh, my children, my family, the kitchen is like the heart of our home. Okay. It's, you know, every weekend we're trying new recipes. Um, and this is, you know, African, continental, Okay. Uh, I love culinary exper experiences. If I'm able to go on a, on a holiday, I define the location based on the food. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> sort of thing, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So you're a true culinary foodie, enthusiast. Foodie, awesome. die hard. A foodie. A and, foodie. And interestingly, interestingly mm -hmm. even at my firm, Credo Advisory, somehow, yeah. um, I don't know if it's organic or by some by some design okay. um, the team, we're also foodies as well. So we- Ah, yeah. 
Okay. Well, you don't want to say it. like attracts like. So hey, exactly. maybe maybe that's what I play here. There <laughs> you think. go. Yes. <laughs> so I am also a foodie, but I, I don't think to the degree that you are. I think I I definitely enjoy you know um you know fine foods um gourmet foods and all that. I cook some here and there, but yeah, no, I I don't think it's to the degree. Maybe. Once my children grow up and we all get into it, maybe then. But that's what, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Miss Okubo, now thank you so much. Now that we've gotten to know your hobbies, you know your love for French and how you picked it up, let us segue now to um to communications, communications and the African narrative. That's what the title of the show is. Nigeria is very complex and dynamic, and it just seems like the negative narrative about Nigeria is quite. So let me let me give you an example of that. I once had a guest on my show um, who came on and he he has a, a um on his Instagram platform and has so many followers. The main premise of his platform is to highlight and showcase positive things that positive things that Nigerians are doing over the world, right? Whether they're in Nigeria or here in the diaspora. And when I probed him, and I had to have him on my show, and when we, we talked about it, he goes, Look, you almost that. There just seems like, and he's had some some very nasty experiences here in the diaspora, you know, where the minute a conversation could be going very well with 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 someone of some other race, right? And the minute that maybe the person asks, "Oh, where are you from?" and he goes, "Oh, Nigeria," it just either that constructs the, the conversation, you know, or the person just kind of like, "Oh, yeah, you guys, you know, with your four one nine, or and then the, the you know, then the government they just draw the negative, and he's like, yeah. "Oh, you know what? For all these two negatives or three negatives that you've drawn out, I can paint five positives or 10 positives. I can point to 10 fantastic Nigerians, even here in the diaspora, right, who are doing amazing things. So with that said, if you were the Minister of Communications in Nigeria, tell us what you will do to help, and I know this is a little bit loaded, tell us what you will do to help rewrite the Nigerian narrative. I mean, how will you use your skills as a communications expert to help build trust and effect change about the perception of Nigeria. Because on the one hand, there are Nigerians, and on the other hand, there is Nigeria. Okay, so thank you for that. I think you, you're you really addressing a topic that's actually quite close to my heart, right? And uh, I'll rephrase your question to if I was to advise the um, government or just Nigerians in general, how do we change that narrative? And it's actually quite simple. And you already hit the nail on the head. So for every instance of um, kind of negative press or that negative perception, there are hundreds of stories of excellence. As Nigerians, we are a country of overachievers from the grassroots all the way to the diaspora. And unfortunately, those stories of excellence don't really um, come to the fore. People are not aware of it. And then when in the media, uh, there's this story of the, you know, a fraudster or a corrupt uh, government official, that is what ends up defining who we are as Nigerians. And it's happened repeatedly for decades. And um, I think it's something as simple from the PR perspective, having those success stories um, take the focus, having people share their stories of excellence, their triumphs, and really showing Nigeria at its best. And it happens. It already happens. You hear, you know, you know about the Ninja boys. These are young boys in, I mean, despite their economic or social challenges, have been able to create a name for themselves using sheer Nigerian ingenuity and drive. There's so many stories like that. And these boys are now, you know, in the global stage, they've gone to Hollywood, they're now meeting celebrities just on their creativity as Nigerians. This is just one story. And um, so from my perspective as a communications expert, leveraging social media, we are very aware of the power it wields. Uh, however, we need to use it to our advantage and it needs to be um, not by chance, but by design. Imagine a hashtag proud to be Nigerian, proud Nigerian. Every time uh, a venture capitalist lands a great deal or a fashion designer is showing at um, New York Fashion Week, or you know, um, a woman um, in uh, uh, in rural Nigeria has been able to successfully get financing to start a solar, you know, energy um, uh, installation, something like that, or has started a food processing business. 
at the micro level. These are all stories of success and Nigerian excellence. And a hashtag proud Nigerian or, you know, uh, this is Nigeria, that over time will now start to pick up and begin to counter those very actually false narratives. And um, it, it's really important that we do it ourselves. No one can write our own story, nobody. No one can write our story. And over time, you will now be able to hear all of these amazing stories that are happening. And they are. You hear of Nigerians all the way in, you know, different parts of the world being mayors in Poland, um, you know, solving all kinds of, of uh, you know, technology, uh, you know, challenges. And we're able to leverage our education, leverage our creativity for good. But those stories are not what is in the media. So also partnering with the media, right? Partnering the way, and this is where government and private sector have, have a, a role to play. Partnering with the media to ensure that those stories continue to be, you know, continue to be promoted. And then because we have a youth bulge, we have a massive youth demographic that we have not even tapped into. We haven't. And Tapping that into is it. Yes, tapping into it, right? working with influencers to share these stories. Over time, those when you hear about, you know, some of the negative news that happens, it, you know, it pales in comparison to all the positive ones. Nigeria does not have the patent on fraud or corruption. This is a global <laughs> construct. We don't. But unfortunately, that is how we've been defined in the media. And unfortunately, after some time, that's how we begin to see ourselves. If you hear enough times that your country or that, you know, were, were corrupt, after a time becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's to really turn it on its head and promote those stories of excellence. And then um, I, I believe that's how we can counter it. But we must continue to be hopeful and we must continue to work to, um, to elevate ourselves as, as Nigerians and as, as individuals. So um, that's how I would address it. And this is just one of many um, interventions that can be done. Yeah, that's, right. that, that's something that we've done very easily and actually, you know, with very with next to nothing. You know, everyone has an app. Everyone, Nigeria is very well um, connected to, you know, to social media and we use it when we when we need to. So why not channel it in a more constructive and, inten and intentional way to um, help improve the perception that people have of, of who we are. And when so when you are, you know, when you say in a room that you're a Nigerian, you can say it with your head held high, that, um, you know, whatever is in the media that, in the, that's negative doesn't define me, nor does it define the average American or the average French, um, French woman or, or Pole. So why should it define us? For every negative story, there should be hundreds of positive ones. Thank you so much for that. And I'm going to, and it's the, the the message is key. Thank you so much for it. But I'm gonna take a piece of it, right, and, and put it a little bit in context. So I hear you when you say, and you're right. You know, it is up to us. No one can do it for us, right? No one is gonna be. The, it's not the American who's gonna, you know, be out there, you know, uh, spreading positive messages about Nigeria. They're not gonna do it. They have their own country to worry about, right? You know. So it is up to us, Nigerians. But let me maybe let me throw a monkey wrench a little bit in, into that, and then and then hear your opinions. So, but what I find is sometimes, even when I'm speaking with maybe my friends or like in, at a party or at a group gathering, you know, and there are other Nigerians there, and because I'm team Nigeria, I'm anything, I mean, that's, this is partly why I do this show. So, but the minute I, I say something positive, oh, Nigeria, hey, this is what we're doing and all that. I mean, I easily will get the five people who look at me and I'm like, I beg, go sit down, you know, not be Nigeria, I'm see, see what's happen for election, which, how do you... How do you counteract that? Because, and that's why I say on the one hand, they're Nigerians, but on the other hand, there is Nigeria, which is complex. So we are trying out there, us individual Nigerians, trying to put a, a positive spin on things. But then people quickly turn to, well, but look at what's happening in Nigeria or what, you know, how do you, what's a good comeback or how do you yeah. climb out of that? So now being team Nigeria does not signify trying to spin or um, necessarily ignore the reality. The reality is that we had elections that are in the, at the moment in court. So the reality, and we're not the first country to actually have elections that are quite controversial. So again, that should not define who we are. This is part of our developmental journey. This is part of what 
it is to try and have a democracy. So yes, when things don't go the way you feel they don't, you know, they should have gone, it's not necessarily to put our heads in the sand, but it's to double down and say, you know what, I will, this is what I will do. This is the part I will play in trying to help team Nigeria. So it's to always be honest with the reality for sure. So I, I don't know if you saw the video of the Nigerian man who tore his, his, his um, Nigerian passport after the election. Oh, no, I haven't said, oh really? No, I, mean, I know all stuff, all stuff occurred after the, you know? Absolutely, so, no, I because okay. it is, we, you know, after all, you know, people, a lot of people feel that, um, you know, things could have been done differently and that they, these were not free and fair elections and they right. will in their own way communicate and, and, and vent, but it's mm-hmm. not to become despondent. It is to double down and say, but that shouldn't stop it. What's the next thing? What's the next thing we can do? Um, So, and again, I'll keep saying this, this happens all over the world. It is part of progress. It is, you will have setbacks and um, it's for us to um, kind of go around it and mitigate it in our own way so that we we continue staying committed to Team Nigeria. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. Thank you so much for it. And that's the key is we cannot, we need, we, we need to be relentless, right? Mm-hmm. We can't let our guards down. We can't, we can't let that hold us back, right? Like, I'm not going to say all of a sudden, oh my goodness, okay, yeah, I don't believe in Nigeria, so forget about it. I, if every Nigerian were to do that, then what? there's no hope then, right? Exactly. There's no hope then. And, and to be honest, I mean, everyone, we are human. I, ha- we, I have moments where of despair and yeah. um, it's like, is there really, can the, how, will, how are we going to come back from this? But the same way in our own personal lives, we have these moments, whether it's in our career or in education as a parent, um, we don't throw our hands up in despair. So um, it's to really encourage people. And this is where, when on that day where you feel, my goodness, the, you know, the elections or, you know, this happened in Nigeria or this tragedy happened, tragedy happened in Nigeria. You, that's why these stories of, oh my God, but guess what? This girl um, just developed this app that has been bought in, you know, by a, a, a you know, uh, a firm in Silicon Valley. Then you still have those stories. Those success stories are what helps us go through the difficult times. So again, I come back to those success stories. So during the bad times, what do you hold on to? You hold on to other things, other good things that are happening, but it's not going to happen unless there's a national agenda around promoting who we are as Nigerians. And that same national agenda shouldn't always just be, yes, it's, it's to help us remember who we are, what our potential is, what other people are doing in Nigeria and in the diaspora, but to come together during those very difficult times where you do feel very discouraged. And, um, and those are the things that will help us give us hope and motivate us even further to, to move forward. Thank you. No, there's, there's, there's nothing more to add to that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Girl. Okay, so you're also a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation goalkeeper. What, what is this? <laughs> what exactly is this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, in 2015, uh, global leaders came together um, under the umbrella of the United Nations, and they committed to uh, 17 sustainable development goals. Now, these are goals like that would help advance humanity and uh, specifically, um, you know, in in the development world also, but really globally, no to poverty, access to education, access to electricity, you know, um, gender inequality, climate action. And so these global leaders all committed to trying to um, achieve those goals within their own countries. And the Bill and Melinda Gate, as a response in support, started what they call the Goalkeepers Community. And it's a, compu- a community of uh, change makers um, all over the world who are in their own way trying to advance the attainment of those global goals. And uh, because of the work my firm, Credo Advisory, had done um, during COVID, supporting the Presidential Task Force on COVID, um, in Nigeria, we were at the very heart of the national response. We helped to design the, you know, the, the communication strategy, the risk communication strategy on COVID, working very closely with the government, with the NCDC, the global, the you know, development partners, uh, WHO. 
And we worked all the way down to the grassroots in trying to sensitize Nigerians around the risks um, of, of, of uh, the pan during the pandemic, working with government on the safety protocols. And then when the vaccine um, became available, we worked closely with the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency in, in trying to get Nigerians vaccinated. So we did a lot of, again, working on developing a strategy, implementing it, working all the way, working with you know, different stakeholders, the media, you know, um, the religious leaders, traditional rulers, youth groups. And we developed a lot of social media campaigns also in trying to get Nigerians to take the vaccine and dispel a lot of the mis and disinformation. So the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation recognized the impact of our work. And they also, basically we were inducted into the goalkeepers community last September in New York. Mm -hmm. And I will say that it was quite inspiring, um, humbling as well, listening to Malala share her own story and her own- Malala, oh wow. Um, you know, her yeah. own uh, goals and, and initiatives and meeting amazing people doing their own part to trying to attain those goals. You have you know, people all over the world trying through in different sectors. Techn I'm in comms, but people in technology, um, trying to, you know, uh, in energy, uh, education, addressing the, you know, gender imbalance and trying in gender in, in, in you know, inequality, uh, climate action. So meeting my fellow goalkeepers and representing Credo um, as a goalkeeper was, I, I definitely will say is it has been a, a career highlight. And um, we're, we're very committed to supporting, you know, um, governments, individuals, uh, organizations to trying to attain uh, those global goals through communications. And I'm, I'm going to live vicariously through Credo, through you and through Credo Advice, you know, the fact that you're there on that platform says a lot about, again, representing Nigeria, right? Representing that representation, which is fantastic. <laughs> so kudos, kudos, that's Thank awesome. You. Thank you, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Wow, just to be, <laughs> Malala is, is someone who's very inspiring and, and I can imagine, you know, just to hear her story and, and hear the stories of thousands of other gate goalkeepers who are doing their little bit. And, and it kind of goes to show, or goes to a point where you say, you know, it's up to each and every individual Nigerians, right? If we want to effect that change, we, we, so you do your part, I do my part. The next person does, you know, he's or her part. And bit by bit, right? What they say, small drops make a mighty ocean. Bit exactly. by bit, we start to shift that, shift Absolutely. that narrative. And then you now have a critical mass of people working yeah. towards a singular agenda. Goal. There's no way that it, it wouldn't be, it'd be unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, indeed, indeed. Oh my goodness, this has been really enlightening, Mr. Kupel, people. Thank you so much. In two minutes or less, before I let you go, tell us how we as Nigerians, irrespective of location, can join this PR drive. I know we've talked a lot about us doing a, a bit, but irrespective of location, can join this PR drive in helping to showcase our country in a positive light. Thank you. So I think going back to what I've said, um, it is to share your successes, right? But also, yes, there should also be a space to share your pains, your anguish. Um, but when you do succeed, it is to share it because it gives hope, it gives encouragement to others. And um, I think it's also to recognize that we are we have so much more in common than the, than you know than the and not right yeah yeah and then not yeah. and unfortunately because of our political and social um um context we end up allowing those you know differences to kind of uh to define who we are as nigerians you see what happens when we have a national our national team playing another national team we all come together we all come together Right, irrespective of tribe or religion, you know, religion population, exactly. just whatever. Right, we all come together. So it's to do that. That's the same. Um, it's the same thing. Come together to share those stories and let people know that oh, I was able to get you know financing for my food processing um, business um, in the you know this in this rural community because of this. I'll be able to you know, create jobs. I'll be able to create jobs. I'll be able to help, um, you know, uh, uh, improve the local economy from there, who knows? 
And it's yeah. happening. It's happening. It's just that people are not aware of it. So imagine if every day you're, so, you're scrolling through your social media feed and you're hearing all these amazing things. Yes, there'll be setbacks. Yes, there'll be moments where you're like, ah, this country says. However, you will still have those stories encouraging you. And, um, you know, it's, you know, and we, we have that, like that, that uh, Niger no they carry last spirit. Yeah, no they carry last. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know they carry last. <laughs> so it's to keep going. It's to keep okay. going. It's to keep going. Despite those challenges, it, should, it will make us stronger and more intent in changing things and improving things in our country. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So get your stories out. Get your stories out. Don't let anyone else write your story. Share them, share your challenges, share how you were able to overcome a particular um, academic challenge or a particular uh, personal challenge. Share those stories so that that becomes what define us. We are survivors, we are um, change agents, and we are committed to Project Nigeria, to Team Nigeria. Yes, I like that, Project Nigeria, Team Nigeria. And mm -hmm. to your point, is there any country, I mean, you're, you're well-traveled, you're well-versed, you know, you're, you have your ears to the ground. Is there any country without problems? That is even here, even here where I am in, in, in the U.S. I mean, let's not begin to enumerate the problems in the U.S. But guess what? People still have hope, right? People still have that. You're, you're, you're still proud to be American, right? You know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't forsake it or you don't, um, you don't despair much. I mean, like to your point, you yes, you think about it, you but then you sit down, you sit down, you hunker down, and you're like, okay, so how can we move forward? How can we fix this? It should be the same with Nigeria, with Nigerians and Nigeria. It's like we we'll forge ahead. How do we fix this? And how do we move ahead? And how do we showcase the positive stories? I mean, Nollywood is already doing fantastically. I mean, look at our Afrobeats, right? Spot stars. They exactly. are already at the front. So we just need to continue that movement. That Our wave. creative industry is exceptional. And, you know, for instance, I, I, most of what I wear is, 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 is made in Nigeria. And we right. have our fashion industry is next level. It's unreal. Yeah, the food industry. <laughs> but I yes. did want to address something you said. Okay. In every single country, there are people who will feel disenfranchised. Even yes. in the United States, there are people who have yes. lost hope. There are people who feel that the country is not working for them. So again, it's not, um, it's not a Nigeria thing. It is a global thing where people, look what's happening in France. There are demonstrations. Yeah. Um, yeah. So every country will have these, uh, these challenges. It's all part of, 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 of democracy, of, of, um, you know, of who we are as humans. But how we choose to address it is what will differentiate us. And for Nigeria, it is to partner with each other, partner with Nigerians, those of you know in the in the diaspora, and certainly with um, you know with with you know those of us in, you know in Nigeria to ensure that we keep you know kind of keeping our eye our eye on the prize and making sure that we do our own bit and when we fall down and we feel as if we've taken a few steps back those of us who are you know who who are still encouraged to pick each other up and with posting that video of oh my goodness you know my daughter just qualified for the olympics these are the yeah. things that we need to hear at our lowest points and no, one's, no one will do it for us. So imagine if every Nigerian is using their phone, using their social, using social media as a medium to promote our excellence. But also, yes, we can use it, use it to promote our challenges and the things that are going wrong, but it should never be um, an extreme where it's only the negatives or where it's only the positive because there will always be those negatives. So if we can put more, more effort into highlighting all of the positives and the achievements and our triumphs, um, that is what will keep motivating us when we do go through our dark periods or the periods um, where we feel things aren't going, aren't going right. Thank you so much, Ms. Okubo, for enlightening us. This has been a fantastic session. I've enjoyed this interview. Um, again, Nigeria is just dear to my heart and um, I thank you so much for your time. We'll, we'll have you back. I'm sure we'll have you back there. I'm sure there are other things to explore about you and Credo. I, I, and I hope you'll come back. You oblige us. I'll be happy to. Thanks very much for the opportunity. It was lovely talking with you. And I just want to encourage you to keep getting your word out and your truth out and your own achievements out.
Well done. Thank you so much. I will. I will. Thank you so much. So viewers, there you have it. The delightful Miss Okibo. I like it. Like she said, look at what she's wearing. Made in Nigeria. You know, our fashion industry is next to none. The creative space is fantastic. But the one key message I heard about, um, I heard about what she said is, we need to keep hope alive, right? There are, and this is reality in life, even with our personal lives, right? We go through the peaks and, and, and troughs, right? You know, there's, there's moments where you go through the cycle and it's, it's, it's just like with Nigeria as well. We're going through those teething problems. It's a democracy. We're trying to solidify it and there are problems, right? Just as with any other nation. The key there or the, 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 the goal, what she said is keeping our eye on the ball, right? On the, on the goal, on the prize and just keep at it in spite of setbacks. So just as we'll pick ourselves up, you know, in our personal lives, when we have setbacks, the exact same thing with Nigeria. We just keep forging ahead, you know, tackling one solution after the other, one issue after the other, and highlighting the positives, the achievements. We are resilient. We are formidable. We know they carry last. Like, it, I, I don't care what it is. We know they carry last at all, you know. So we keep at it. Join me on another conversation next time. And if you have not subscribed, please go and subscribe, like, share. This is the kinds of goodness, the kinds of caliber of guests I have on my show. Until the next episode of Conversations with Yogosa, I say you stay safe, be positive, keep positive, keep striving, and I'll see you next week. Bye now. Thank you.